We moved into this house full time in 2017 and the plan that we now have here is kind of what our plan was all along and it's wonderful to see it come into fruition. I'm Irma Evans. John and I have retired to Dexter. Geothermal, it made all the sense in the world. And what we can heat the house with is just a fraction if we burned oil or burned some other fuel. And having the solar panels was just a natural thing to do because our house, the, the roof faces south, so it would lend itself perfect for solar. And uh, the electric vehicles, when they came along and they started getting developed, it's like, wow. Why wouldn't That's, we do uh, that? Yeah, why wouldn't yeah. we do that? As a matter of fact, when, they, when we put in the solar, when they got here, my wife and I talked and they said, no, you squeeze every panel you can put on every that one. Roof. We need yeah. every one of those panels with the electric vehicles. We're on our third vehicle. We knew that we needed something that was a truck because we were not like little four-door sedan kind of people because we lug and tuck and load and trailer and we do all of that stuff and you're not going to do that with a car that's like this big. We bought a Ford Lightning in 23 in 2020, we bought a Chevy Bolt that was perfect and wonderful. We had a blast with, took it on tons of trips as we did with the, the truck. And when we realized we've got like 70,000 miles on the Bolt, we've got to seriously think about doing something else here. That's when the Chevy Equinox EV came out. I'll be the first to say electric vehicles aren't for 100% of the population, no doubt about it. If you're up in the Golden Road driving up in the Willy Wags, and that is your job, you're a guide up there, electric vehicles is not what you want, right? But if you're like probably 95% of the rest of us, that most of your trips are within 30, 40 miles from home, um, it's not a problem at all. I mean, as a matter of fact, you never go to a gas station again. You just come home and you plug in and you're ready to go again. Now, if you're going on a long trip, say you're going like we've been to Louisiana with a pickup truck and it was kind of painless. We drove from Virgins, Vermont, all the way here last night, as a matter of fact, and never charged once. 290 miles or something like that. And didn't least, charge, didn't charge least, once. Yeah. So I can tell you, after you drive 200, 250 miles, you're about ready to stop to take a little bit of a break. By the time you charge into that, you plug in and you go in, get yourself a bite to eat or get a cup of coffee, go to the bathroom. By the time you come back, you're almost done or you may be done. There are apps on the phone that you can like punch in a destination and say, this is the route. And up will blossom dozens of places that you can pull over and charge. And I can see why they're worried about it. Yeah. I mean, you had to live it. I, I was worried about it. But now that I've lived it and I've seen the apps and seen this and that, now I know that I was worried about something that wasn't true. Yeah. And yeah, as far as problems, we've had zero problems with it. Does your mileage drop in the winter? Absolutely. So you lose 10, 15% of your mileage, but you know something? 99% of our trips are within 50 miles of the house. So it yeah. really doesn't make a difference. You come home, you drive in the garage, you plug in, and a couple hours later, it's full again. And as time goes on, those ranges are gonna expand. We have some pretty specific needs that the average person in town might not need. You know, not everybody needs all-wheel drive. We live at the top of a, a huge hill on a gravel driveway. So yeah, we kind of do. So I think the technology is moving so fast, I, I'm, I'm psyched yeah. just to watch it happen. 